All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, with the dream masterclass, dream interpretation masterclass. Uh, essentially, this is designed to help you to not only understand your dreams better, um, not only understand how to interpret your dreams and go deeper with your dreams, but also um, so that you can, you know, learn how to communicate with your mind, how the mind communicates. This will help you in your everyday communication. Uh, this will help you with your communication with yourself. This will help you with your manifestation, what you're consciously manifesting in your life, um, and so much more. It will help you with uh, learning the lessons in life, identifying you know what you know the universe is trying to tell you in each experience in your life. It's very deep, very in depth, and very powerful and uh, valuable. You know, I, out of everything I've ever learned in my life, from from you know just like physical life things, metaphysical things, I hold this. 10 times more valuable than anything else, uh, understanding this language. So that's what I, why I value it and why I want to impart it to other people to help them to have the same resource, uh, you know, that I have and be able to use it and utilize it the same, same way that I have. So yeah, the dream interpretation masterclass, it's here. <laughs> so, uh, and, and also if you have any questions or anything, just feel free to ask away. Uh, no problem. So we have to first start off with the foundation of dreams and understanding, you know, what our dreams are and why we dream. One of the very first couple of things that I love to tell people and share with people, because it's, it's huge if you don't know it, is that every dream that you have is about you, the person dreaming. Now, there are, you know, precognitive dreams where you can, you know, perceive things that are probable to happen, you know, different lines of probability. And we'll get into how that's possible through this first lesson, um, understanding the structure of the mind. And, um, you know, you can have visitation dreams where loved ones who have passed away can come back and visit you, or even, you know, just us, we all could meet up in a dream um, and visit each other in a dream. You, know, you don't have to be dead to <laughs> visit people in dreams. Um, but also lucid dreams where you're in a dream and you're aware uh, that you're in a dream, those types of dreams, um, they have a different quality. And um, so even though you're visiting with someone, even though you're, you know, foreseeing a future event through a precognitive dream and everything, and even though you're lucid in the dream, the interpretation still applies. So, e so you can be perceiving a future event, but still interpret it in the same language and understand that everything in there is a representation of you and we can kind of get into that some also when we get into the structure of the mind you know how that's possible the two things um, are uh, true at the same time um, so number two that we have here is every person place and thing within a dream is the aspect of the dreamer's consciousness this is why everything is an aspect of yourself or is it, this is why the dream is about you the person dreaming because everything that you see in the dream is an aspect of your own consciousness. You know, when you go to sleep at night, your physical body goes to sleep. It's the only thing that actually needs sleep and rest. You know, your consciousness never sleeps. Your subconscious mind never sleeps. Your soul never sleeps. Your spirit never sleeps. Your subconscious mind never sleeps. Um, it doesn't need it to. So the physical body goes to sleep and your consciousness shifts from the physical body to the astral body, you know, your soul, your etheric body, emotional body, mental body, and astral body. And it shifts to that, and then you experience things within the subconscious mind. So everything, when you're looking around in your dream, you're actually looking around at the thoughts within your mind because thoughts are just images, and you're looking around at those images within your subconscious mind. And so dreams are a reflection of the dreamer's consciousness the previous day or two. So when you're, when you're dreaming, the thoughts and things that you're looking at are what has been going on within your own mind the last previous day or couple of days. So that's why it's so valuable and because every single day you're getting a new lesson from your subconscious mind on how you've been using your mind. So it's either going to tell you the different obstacles that you've been coming across. And so by interpreting it, you can identify how to overcome those obstacles. It's going to tell you the things that you've been struggling with, the kind of the way that you've been talking to yourself mentally, you know, um, it's going to tell you the things that you've been doing well so that you can identify exactly how you did those things so you can replicate it again in the future. You know, it's going to tell you 
you know, how, how you have overcome obstacles in the past, how you've progressed, how you're moving along and, and building upon, you know, your, your different goals and things that you're building. You know, it's going to tell you exactly how you're, how you're accomplishing that. You know, so it's going to give you every single morning, every single day, it's going to give you insight on where you're at, where you've kind of been coming from and how to get to where you're wanting to go in, in life, in your own personal development, in your own soul growth and spiritual development. You know, so that's, that's why dreams are so vital and so important. You know, it's not like, you know, like, like me, I'm, I'm someone who's very subjective. So I can go to my friends and I can kind of tell them, you know, what things that I think may help them in getting further along. They can, you know, we all can kind of look at our own lives and kind of assess what we think might happen and might, might be able to uh, help us to get through, you know, our, our struggles and um, problems and issues that come up in life. But your subconscious mind is, is your primary teacher. You know, it's aware of everything you're aware of and it's aware of everything you're unaware of. It holds all of the knowledge that you've gained through this lifetime and previous lifetimes. You know, you have the knowledge of hundreds of lifetimes coming from this, uh, you know, this sub subconscious mind that can really help guide you in, in much deeper ways than anything else that you can experience on, on this planet. So it's uh, very important to listen, you know, to what your subconscious mind is trying to tell you through your dreams. It's, it's vital, I think, in any in anyone trying to get any real, um, you know, growth and progression, you know, to take really big strides. It's, I mean, it's not necessarily vital because you can, you can find the same, you know, information other ways, you know, through secondary ways, you know, you can get different types of readings and things where those people will be assessing the thoughts also within your aura and, or, um, you know, communicating with, you know, your own subconscious mind for you, um, you know, and so things will come through that way. Uh, so it is not, not necessarily necessary, you know, there's other ways, but you know, me, I'm, you know, Taurus three weeks, the natural, I like to go straight to the source. So um, the fourth thing here we have listed, the more attention you give to your dreams, the deeper your experience will become. And that's basing off of the universal truth that what you put your attention on grows, you know, energy flows where the attention goes. So if you want to go deeper with your dreams, if you want to cultivate a stronger relationship with your subconscious mind, you know, with your soul, dreams are the, are the number one place to start because that's how your soul, your subconscious mind is already trying to communicate with you for your entire life, you know, and, and working with dreams and putting your attention upon them, you know, writing them down, talking to other people about them, you know, talking, you know, praying to yourself about them, you know, talking to yourself about them. These are all ways in which you can begin the, the conversation and communication back to your subconscious mind. You know, it's like if someone was, you know, calling you and leaving you messages all your entire life by actually working with your dreams and, and connecting deeper with yourself, that's a way that you are then responding to that call and, and having things to say back. And then it's a two-way conversation, you know, um, and applying the message in the dreams is also a way of communicating, hey, I got your message, I'm applying it, you know, what's next? And you'll start to see that as you as you work with your dreams, or if you already have, you can I'm sure you can look back and see and and read through the different dreams that you've written down on on. Oh, okay, I see how I was struggling with this a lot, and then this dream shows me exactly how I overcame that and what that's produced for me and what's next. You know, here's the next lesson. You know, I have a lot of times where people, you know, they'll come to me and with a dream and they'll be like, "Man, I thought that I worked on this, but my dream's showing me this." And it's like, well, no, it's showing you that. You have worked on this, but because you've accomplished this, this is the new lesson. You know, it's like, it's a perpetual thing. You know, once you reach a goal, either you, either you, you know, the ego takes over and you just get stuck on having reached that goal. And you're like, Hey, look what I've done. Look what I've done. Or you, once you reach a goal, you have another goal to hit. You know, if, if you want to save up thousand dollars, you save a thousand dollars. I mean, then what, you know, on to the next 5,000. You know, you want to uh, graduate high school, you know, you accomplish 10th grade. Great. You accomplish 10th grade. It's summertime, you know, relax. But, you know, then what? You're just going to stop at 10th grade? No, you're going to move on to 11th grade, you know? So it's always perpetual. And, and, and the more that you uh, apply the dreams, then the more that the dreams will then respond back to you on what's next, the next step, the next thing to continue so that you can have that continual perpetual, you know, progression and evolution. All right, so 
our dreams are in a language and it's, it's language is the language of the mind. It's universal, meaning everyone's mind communicates in this way, in a language of images. You know, no one, no one's mind is different. Everyone's mind is the same um, in, in that way and how it communicates in the language that it uses. You know, here on earth, you know, we have, you know, 185 different languages or something. I'm just throwing out a random number, I guess. Maybe even more, especially if you're counting dialects. But anyways, our minds only have one language and it is a language of images. And when you can understand that language, then you can understand the message that's being given. Here, yeah, our mind communicates in images. <laughs> our thoughts are images. You know, if I... If I ask you to think of a balloon, you know, you can, I'm sure you've probably said either red or some people said blue, but most people probably said red. And, but, or what other, other color, green, purple, yellow, it doesn't matter. You saw an image and because you saw an image, you could display or convey what color that image was when you thought of a balloon. Same thing with, you know, anything else. Even if, even if you saw the word blue, you know, what color was the word? You know, was it black and white? Was it yellow? Was what kind of font did it have? You know, you can you know say all that because you can see all that because it's images. And so when we understand that, then it it helps in understanding that when we dream, we're just looking at the thoughts within our mind. The images that we're seeing are just the thoughts within our mind, and you just have to understand what those images are. And now the subconscious mind, I put here the power of positive thinking to help people to understand that our minds don't communicate, don't understand, you know, don'ts or nots. You know, they only understand the image. They only communicate with the image. You know, like if, uh, if, I, if, if I couldn't talk or you couldn't hear and I held up a book, you know, like, yeah, if you, if you couldn't hear any word and I held up a book, you know, and said, I don't want this. 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 But all you, all you saw was me going like this. I, I don't want this. I don't want this. You didn't hear anything I said. You would think I want this book, <laughs> you know, please give, grab me this book. Can anybody find this book? Grab it for me. You know, but I'm trying, I'm saying, I don't want this, but I'm pointing to, you know, but I'm actually, you know, you know, putting all of my attention on it. So your subconscious mind, some whole duty of the subconscious mind is to, to to um, manifest the thoughts of the conscious mind. So even when we say we don't want something, the image that we have is what we don't want. Like, I don't want to be at late at work. Only image in my mind I'm creating is an image of being late, you know? So then the subconscious mind is like, okay, let's give them all the red lights. Let's build up a traffic jam. Let's have an ambulance come flying through. You know, <laughs> let's create an accident up here. So he has to kind of be late. Let's give him a flat tire. You know, let's do whatever we need to help him manifest on not wanting to be late for work. <laughs> you know, because the only image that you see is being late. So that's why it's very powerful and very necessary to understand that positive thinking really works and it's really valuable. You know, it, and if you don't believe that, then go ahead and go out there and try negative thinking. See, see what kind of <laughs> things manifest for you and try that but no nobody will, nobody wants to try that because whether they understand it consciously or not they unconsciously know that positive thinking is powerful but our thoughts anyways our thoughts are images and our mind speaks in this language of images so the better that we can understand these images then the better we can understand the message but before we really are able to get into the image of things and what and what this in the language and how the language is formed and the function of the language and the foundation of the language and get into you know symbols and interpreting things, I think it's more important that we understand the mind. 